disabled people, people with disabilities, and caregivers and families coming together as equals and getting to know each other as equals. And that would address some of the attitude problems, because there's a lot of attitude problems. Um, and then, of course, financially speaking, it, it does need to be a more rewarding thing. I also think that there is something to be said about people with disabilities working together to fill in their gaps. Like, I've got some significant executive functioning problems and paperwork problems. Um, in terms of figuring out what to say. However, my friend has the worst handwriting in the world. So together we can fill out forms. <laughs> I can write, just tell me what to say. Um, or, you know, I can organize things, but I can't keep them organized. Whereas I've got friends who are the opposite, so we can work together with that. And I think that building our interdependence within our community and around our community, because there's other people who aren't disabled who have similar weaknesses, just not as intensely. And uh, yeah, caregivers who actually are good need to be paid better, and they need actual training. And uh, people with disabilities should be involved in the training process. We should be involved in everything about us. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yes. I also really enjoyed <laughs> your presentation. Um, I guess my, my question comes out of a long standing. Uh, sense of agreement and outrage with what you were talking about with respect to ABA and the LOVAS method. And I guess I've spent the better part of my adult life trying to, trying to rail against that in some ways. Norman and I are now in a doctoral program and the only good reason I could think of to start a doctoral program was so that perhaps I could have something to say that might be considered credible about ABA. Um, you started out mentioning and, and I love the phrase, oh. I use it too, about you know the kinder and gentler ABA, which is what people seem to be telling us. Oh, no, no, we don't do that any, anymore. <laughs> We're not trying to make you indistinguishable from your peers anymore. Oh. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> and yes, and no. yeah, it's, it's what I call uh, ABA light. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that a little more? Um, well, first, they're still going for indistinguishable from peers. However, the definition of indistinguishable from peers that Lovas successfully attained by abusing a bunch of children, I actually met the definition for indistinguishable from peers. I'm this is what indistinguishability looks like, folks. They're, they're selling you this idea of cure. They're not telling you that to be indistinguishable from peers means that you are progressing from grade to grade at a normal rate, that you are within one year of your um, classmates age-wise, and that you have one typically developing friend. And that part was added fairly recently, the, the friend part. It was when I was a child, it was the academic progression only. So this is what indistinguishability looks like. So I'm gonna start with that. Um, that's, that's not what they're telling you, is it? <laughs> but um, the kinder, gentler ABA is still coming. It still does a lot of discrete trials, which is the stand up, good girl, sit down, good boy, because you're M&M, um, and no, no prompts or um, fail. I don't remember what they call the other one, but where you do it wrong and they say no and fix it, and they say no and they hand over hand you, it's terrible. Don't, don't do that. Don't ever do that. Oh my God. Yeah. But the kinder or gentler ABA is still doing that, and it's still coming from a place that says that our natural way of doing things is wrong. That we will not, that we have no right to act bizarrely. I've read the me books and I'm quoting Lil Boss. We have no right to act bizarrely. We need to act like real people. That the reason we do things doesn't matter. It's just that we're doing it. And it means that we shouldn't be doing it. And so the kinder, gentler ABA might have less hitting and they might be gentler with their hand over hand or making you stand up or what have you, but they're still interfering with your space. They're still demanding compliance, and compliance is not good. It's still dog training, except dogs, service dogs, they um, teach to do intelligent disobedience. We're not even allowed that. I don't know, do people know what I mean when I say intelligent disobedience? They're preventing you from crossing against traffic. Yes. Or like my, my service cat can't, he knows that he, even if I want him to be quiet, he should still yell at me if I'm going to have a seizure. Even if I'm telling him to shh, shh, quit being a brat, he is going to continue yelling at me. So yeah, we, we're not even allowed that. 
even in the kinder, gentler ABA. They still want us to act like them. I don't know if this would be helpful. It's a phrase that I find useful in talking about therapy. It's a phrase of colonization of the body. And just like the British colonized India, so professionals are colonizing our bodies. They're claiming it as their property rather than their property. I find that somewhat useful. However, um, I find myself having difficulty using the term colonization because it seems appropriative. Because, um, well, okay, so I'm quarter Mongolian and our people took over like everywhere. But um, <laughs> I'm also, um, half white, although Eastern European white, not British white, and white people took over like everything, and so I don't feel comfortable using that term because for the most part, my people were not the colonized, they were colonizers, and mm. so it just feels like racially not okay. However, mm. I, I understand the concept and find the concept good, just in looking for better vocabulary. Uh, good. Hi, intersectionality. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so I had a question. I think you used the term like helper uh, like, for like the paras who like have that white savior attitude. Yes, the white savior. That's the, the term I use. The able, I call the helper personality or just the able savior attitude. Yeah. White knight. White, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's even better. So yeah, when I hear white knight, I think about people on the internet who complain about being friend zoned in real life, coming to the defense of somebody who's actually really better. wrong yeah. um, because they think it'll get them positive attention or something from, from a person of their preferred uh, partner gender. Yeah. <laughs> MRA, yuck aside. Say again, please. Um, MRA. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that stuff aside, um, I'm actually still in high school and I just like came back from like to the high school. And I was actually just interacting with uh, the social ed program there. I'm out of it, thankfully, but I have friends who are like still in that um, area where they have those white savior type para educators. They complain to me in the hallways a lot. And uh, you know, you were talking about like how to empower people. Like I want, I, I started this able coalition there and I want to know like, what I can do to uh, change that sort of system. Oh goodness, changing the school system. There's a reason <laughs> I quit teaching. <laughs> the reason I couldn't change the school system. Um, and they were not helpful to my students, they were helpful to themselves. Um, but if you guys stand together, if the students with disabilities stand together, uh, especially when people are being awful, it is helpful to show that there's a community and solidarity because if there's, there's a lot of inter-disability community fighting and if we can stand together on the things that, on things that, you know, that's, that's helpful. We're much bigger and it's going to be a big fight and oh my God, schools are the worst. I know. Schools <laughs> are the actual worst. I loved my students, but the system, I couldn't. So, I will have to think on that one. Yeah. A mentor of mine once said, people do not change systems. Groups of people change mm -hmm. systems. I think very often it's easy to get caught up in saying, what can I do? Who can I write a letter to? How can I write a speech that will get this across? But I think what we need to do first of all is come together. Because not only do we, do, do we become more powerful when we're together, but it's that sense of belonging that builds and maintains our resilience. <laughs> when you're alone, you can get really tired and really depleted mm -hmm. really quickly. 
it's only in communities like this where there's almost a limit unlimited resilience. I don't know about unlimited, but I know that I get very, very yeah. burned out and I can't keep going because my community gives me a reason to do it. Yeah. And my community also gives me support to do it. Anything else? Surprised I didn't get any fruit thrown at me. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have Fresh it. out. <laughs> <laughs>